Hey guys, I'm back with another video. It has only been about a week this time, which is much better than a month. So I am continuing my series on Memphis and mysteries and disappearances, deaths that happened here, which I have really been loving um, and getting to investigate things that happened in my own hometown has been really fun for me. So I hope you guys have been enjoying it. Let me know if you would like to me to continue this series by liking this video or leaving me suggestions of other cities I should do or other mystery cases I should do in the comments. I would love to hear your feedback on that. So this is a video on the disappearance of John Andrews Cheek. Um, he went missing back in 1993, which was both also known as the Missing Millionaire case here in Memphis, and it's relatively um, popular and famous. I hadn't heard of it, but I know my parents and some family friends had, so I think it's relatively popular here in Memphis. So John Cheek what, um, attended Memphis University School. He was born here. And I'm sure John Cheek um, was born in Memphis and attended Memphis University School, which is a prestigious all boys school here in Memphis. After graduating high school, he attended um, or he moved to Dallas, Texas to attend Southern Methodist University. And then um, while he was there, he joined Phi Delta Theta fraternity. And he was a popular and successful student. He made a lot of friends, he made good grades, and was well liked in his university. Then he went on to get a master's degree in business administration from University of Chicago, which is a really great school. And shortly after graduating there, he moved back to Memphis. He was given a job as chief financial officer of Kate's company, which is pretty remarkable. I have not heard of many recent graduates getting a chief an officer job right after graduating. That's pretty insane and shows what a great businessman and how responsible and well-liked he was. In his free time, he was a member of Phoenix Club, which is an organization in Memphis that raises money for the Boys and Girls Club of America. So not only was he a successful businessman, but he also was a philanthropist and really wanted to make Memphis better. So even before he turned 30, he was on his way to becoming one of the most successful businessmen in Memphis which is really amazing and shows what a hard worker he is. So all of his hard work was about to pay off. He had been working 18 hour days for almost three months at um, the point of his disappearance. He was working on um, a stock offering to take his company public. Um, this was a pretty risky move for him, but um, if it worked out, he was in, um, he was on his way to making an a million dollar profit for himself, which is amazing and really would have um, helped him out a lot and made all of this hard work worth it. So on December 2nd, he, um, John Cheek was on his way home from Portland, Oregon, where he was tying up some loose ends for this deal. He, um, something in the business deal kind of went a little bit off the tracks and he needed to return home early from this trip. His flight got in at 6 a.m. to the Memphis International Airport and from there he went straight to the office. He told colleagues there that he had been up for 72 hours at this point but continued to work all day. Um, he figured out what had gone off the tracks a little bit and worked it all out. And after work, he went out with some colleagues to get some dinner. And those colleagues said that at dinner, he was happy. He wasn't talking about work. They were talking about the local basketball team and having fun, sharing jokes. He seemed to be really happy. He wasn't down in the dumps or seemed really stressed out. He 
you definitely seem tired, but it was the end of a work day, so that it seemed relatively normal for them. One of his colleagues dropped him back off at his car at 11.30. Um, his car was still parked at the office, so they dropped him off there. And that was the last time that John Cheek is known to have been seen alive. So the next day, December 3rd, 1993, um, John Cheek didn't show up for work, and this was very odd. His colleagues um, were immediately um, unnerved by this. They knew something was wrong. He showed up for work every day, or at least called in and said why he wasn't coming into work. So they immediately called his parents and asked if they had seen him. They hadn't, so they called the Memphis Police Department and reported him missing that same day. The next day, December 4th, his car was found on an off-ramp. It was an off-ramp for Delaware Road, which is now the off-ramp for, for the Memphis Metal Museum. The car was locked and everything was still inside. Nothing um, really told the police why it was parked there. There was no signs of foul play. They immediately went to his house and again, there were really no signs of foul play there either, other than an open garage door. His car obviously was not inside, which was strange, but the garage door was open when it was normally left closed during the day and night. Since his disappearance, no charges have been made on his credit card. So some people have a theory that um, something went wrong in this business deal or he was um, performing some type of fraudulent acts to help this business deal go through, but that's simply not true. Um, he was a very hardworking person, was honest, and was reliable. And after his disappearance, this deal went through without a hitch. He was um, a very trustworthy person. There was no funds that were lacking. There was no fraudulent paperwork, nothing like that. Nothing that would have caused him to run away or to commit suicide. Um, the hitch that kind of happened when he was in Portland was fixed that day, according to his colleagues. So that wouldn't have really been enough for a motive for him to run away, to leave his life behind. And that um, all of the, the deal went through without a hitch after his disappearance really strikes me as strange if he were to commit suicide. Um, he had something really going for him at this point and he never really got to see all of his hard work pay off which is really sad to me. After his disappearance his case was shown on Unsolved Mysteries as well as in pa People magazine. This really didn't lead to any new leads though which is really sad for his family. They were hoping that putting this out to the public would have brought in a bunch of new leads but it didn't unfortunately. But we'll, now we'll talk about the only true lead in this case, which came in on Valentine's Day, 1994. A trucker named Vaughn Jackson called into the Memphis Police Department saying that he saw John Cheek at this truck stop in Rafine, Virginia. He recognized the man from a flyer that he had seen of John Cheek. He said that this man um, seemed out of place because he was he was wearing suit trousers and a button-up top and a suit tie, as well as Sperry top cider shoes. Then he had all of his other belongings neatly folded and tied around with a belt. He seemed like a man who was just down on his luck, but had um, recently been relatively wealthy to afford these types of clothes. So Ron Jackson bought this man breakfast and had a short conversation with him. The man said he was he had stayed at a homeless shelter in Little Rock and was hitching rides to try and making his way to Richmond, Virginia. Um, after talking to him, the man just kind of got up and walked out, and that was the last time that Ron, jo Ron Jackson spoke to him. Um, the parents immediately knew that this was their son because the shoes missing from John's closet were his Sperry topsider shoes, which was a detail that um, just really struck them and um, made them sure that this was their son. So the Memphis Police Department 
decided to go and talk to a clerk at this gas station, as well as the owner of the gas station. The clerk said that she had seen him, this man, um, sitting in a chair and sleeping during the day at this gas station, and the owner said that he had kicked him out on Valentine's Day for panhandling and loitering around his gas station. But after these leads, nothing really came of it. They were never able to locate this man, um, and they really don't know what happened to this man after he was kicked out of the gas station. But psychologists have a theory of maybe why John Cheek would have um, got up and left and just started hitching rides from people in Virginia. So they say there is this um, disorder called fugue, fugue state. And this happens to people when they're under an enormous amount of stress like John Cheek was during this time. It causes people to just completely lose their identity, but to function as normal. So they're able to go about kind of a normal life, and but they don't remember who they are, really what they're doing or where they are. They don't have an identity, but they are able to function and kind of go about life as normal. So they think maybe John was under such an amount of stress that he just forgot who he was and somehow just started hitching rides, just left Memphis and made his way to first Little Rock and then all the way to Virginia. But the problem with this theory is that this disorder typically only lasts a few months to maybe one or two years. And this happened in 1993, which in December made it 24 years since this um, his disappearance took place. So that's way longer than the typical time span of this disorder. So back to the suicide theory, friends and family really, to this day, do not believe that John Cheek committed suicide. Um, they don't think that he really had a motive to, as well as no history of mental illness. And um, we still have never found his body. People believe maybe he jumped off the Mississippi River Bridge, but it just doesn't really fit. I mean, he had um, this deal going for him. He was working so hard on it, but people think he was 72 hours into not sleeping. Maybe he had been drinking at dinner and those things just added up and the amount of stress he was under and um, he just went in a downward spiral and wasn't able to come back out, unfortunately. So sadly, in August of 2000, John Cheek was officially declared dead. This gave his family closure to his um, untimely death, but he will always be remembered as the hardworking, smart, intelligent, kind man that he was. Although he wasn't on this earth for very long, he definitely made an impact and um, he will always be remembered for his um, life and what he was able to do in the short time that he had. I would love to hear you guys' theories on this case. It is very interesting, and I really don't know what to think. I feel like with all of the theories that we've been given, all of them have major problems with it. I would love to hear what you think on each of them. And let me know if you have any new suggestions and give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying this Memphis series. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week.